Hello, my name is Stuttering Soliloquy, but you can call me Angie if you can't pronounce it. And um, first I'd like to thank Bane for having me on his channel. I really appreciate it. And him and I were talking about rejection and what feminists do to MRAs and how feminists kind of seem to project issues that they have with their movement onto other movements. And so while the term was first coined by Sigmund Freud in the late 1800s, it was kind of summed up perfectly by his understudy Carl Jung in this quote, which says, We always see our own unavowed mistakes in our opponent. So I went hunting for perfect examples of this, because we know for a fact that feminists, if you know what projection is, you know that feminists definitely are guilty of this. So I went hunting and I found a lovely article on Jezebel, great website. And the headline reads, Rape and Death Threats, What Men's Rights Activists Really Look Like. And they immediately go on to say, Men's rights activists are rage-filled misogynists who claim feminists intentionally cover up issues like male rape and workplace injury rates so women can achieve global domination. Har. Those pesky feminazis, however, keep getting in the way. So it's up to the MRAs to win the world over. And how do they do this? By threatening to gag, rape, and gut bitches who dare to question their flimsy politics. So this implies a lot that feminists definitely don't have flimsy politics themselves, but they also immediately go on to generalize and insult MRAs um, while saying that MRAs will only resort to insults. So they don't even really include any statistics or anything to debunk anything about MRAs. So they go on to talk about Charlotte, Big Red. I'm sure you guys know her. She is very well known for being at that protest of the um, MRA meeting. And she's trying to scream that list that she's got. And they were disruptive and stuff. So they go on to, to, to discuss her. Um, Charlotte was pissed off and feisty because she was consistently interrupted as she tried to explain how feminists hate the patriarchy, not men themselves. Her message wasn't anti-men, it was anti-gender stereotypes and anti-oppression. She wasn't subservient, and now she is paying for the crime of being a woman was a public opinion. So, they make her out to be the victim here, which is really frustrating, because she was there to purposely disrupt a peaceful meeting that they were, they were having. And then she's using it as a platform to try to get her message across. But then they also go on to say that she's paying the crime of being a woman with a public opinion, as if men don't also pay the same price when they speak out against feminism. And they also try to say that feminists hate the patriarchy, not men themselves, as if kill all men was not a thing. And a lot of feminists, or people that claim to be feminists, have not said that they specifically hate men and would rather them not be around. So to say this is like bullshit, complete bullshit. So they go on to say, after the video received around 300,000 views in one week, thousands of MRAs joined forces to harass and cyber stalk Charlotte. They circulated her personal info and dredged up details about her past. And then they also go on to say that MRAs contacted Charlotte via Facebook, Tumblr, Twitter, and defunct dating profiles. They discovered and circulated her work info and home address so that others could intimidate her more effectively. So they're talking about cyberbullying and in, in real life harassing and getting her work info and finding all of her social media accounts. And they act like this is a big deal, like they have really hurt her and it's not like feminists have ever done this or cheered on people that have done this to other people who have spoken out. This is one of my favorite examples in this article because tons of feminists will hunt down your work info so that they can try to get you fired for being a rape apologist or being racist or whatever. So it's exact, it's just, it's an exact example of projection. And they go on to say, 
if MRAs actually wanted to mobilize behind the issues they raised, they'd stop whining about how hard it is to be a white North American dude and take action by, say, campaigning for workplace safety measures or helping men and boys who are survivors of rape and domestic violence access the resources they need. But MRAs aren't as interested in making things better for men as much as they're interested in reasserting male dominance by silencing women. Which, that last line is one of, like, the most feminist things I've heard, apart from the next line I'm going to read. Um, but they go on to say all these things that MRAs should be doing, and, like, they should be actually focusing on their own issues and not what other people are doing, while well, feminists do the same thing. They, instead, are so concerned about converting people to the church of feminism and arguing with people online, trying to find their work info and getting them fired, you know, harassing them online. And they are projecting onto MRAs the fact that their movement is not as focused as it should be. The other thing that bothers me about this is I'm sure a lot of you have heard the story about the man who tried to raise funds for a male shelter for domestic violence, and he basically was bullied to the point where he killed himself. So this is exactly why MRAs don't do stuff like this. And every time they do try, it gets taken down for one reason or another, because feminists have attacked it. So them saying this is also bullshit. And their closing argument is one of my favorites. Since their arguments are so laughably spurious, MRAs can't successfully combat feminism with facts. That's why so many of them resort to intimidation via threats of rape and violence. Hey, it's how the patriarchy has operated for centuries. That's how they know it works. I told you it was bad. I told you this next one was, was very cringy. Um, combating feminism with facts, they can't do that. It's not like feminists do what exactly what they're saying. When you try to come at them with facts, they will instead just insult you. In my early days of Twitter, I got into an argument with somebody about um, the, wage, the wage gap. And I showed them some sources proving that there is no wage gap. And just saying, hey, listen to this. And she instead insults me by saying... Milo Yiannopoulos, really? Are you fucking stupid? Or that's not a reputable news source. This isn't, you know, whatever. And then the whole educate yourself thing as if you're stupid. So this is just so frustrating to see them be, like, oblivious to the fact that these are things that they do themselves. And this is why so many people take issue with feminism and why it's not getting anything fucking done. I hope you learned something <laughs> about projection here, and I'm just surprised that it's been around since the late 1800s, and <laughs> they seem to be so oblivious to the fact that they're doing it. Um, once again, I'd like to thank Bane for having me on his channel, and it was good meeting you guys. If you liked this video, be sure to like it down below and subscribe to my channel. Bye!